welcome back to Lost in Rosha, the ultimate journey through the Stormlight Archive. I'm Christian. And I'm Jimmy. Today we are diving into chapters 29 and 30, and as always, full spoilers ahead for the entire Stormlight Archive series. Uh, so if you haven't read the books, we'll see you later. And for everyone else, welcome back to the wonderful lands of Roshar. Uh, we are back today getting into a whole new part. We're going to be getting in chapters uh, 29 and 30, as we said. Last week we had the interludes, which were pretty cool. Uh, I think we had some pretty big revelations and some stuff that I still don't really understand, to be honest with you. But overall, it was good. But Christian, how are you doing? I'm doing well, man. Part three, dying. Dying. Very dying. uplifting. Yeah. You know what? I'm not. I'm feeling all right, though. Um, I was watching. I'm doing a Breaking Bad rewatch, as you do as a Breaking Bad fan. It never leaves. You just you just take breaks. And um, there was a scene where someone was lamenting that they had cancer and Walt's like, every life comes with a death sentence. Woo. And, and in a way I was like, let's go, man. That Live is my life to the fullest. I'm going to reread the way of Kings. That again. is, uh, <laughs> that makes me want to get out of this chair and go do something. <laughs> I know. Right? It's like, every life's got a death sentence, dude. What are you talking about? It's like, Oof. My goodness. Yeah, that's um, like, yeah. Motivational quote right there. Uh, but I'm doing good, man. It was, um, it felt like we haven't read a, it feels weird, like the interludes count as chapters, but I almost don't see them that way. It feels like we haven't read a classic Way of Kings chapter in a while. Yeah, I can kind of understand uh, what you're saying with that. I, I actually love the interludes because of the things I remember the least out of the books. Like, I don't remember yeah. many interludes. I'm sure as we go, like, I'll it'll jog my memory. Yeah. But last, last week when we did them, there was definitely ones that I had no recollection of. Yeah, I I messaged you this week just dropping in a theory and just we never spoke again i was like dude just writing it here before i forget maybe axis has a dawn shard and i think mm. you just did like the thinking emoji and we never discussed it further so uh yeah do you think he does uh maybe because hoyd like it's suggested in the stormlight archive that hoyd has had one and because of it he can't eat meat or hurt people he can't attack people right so there's like a there's like mm. a boon um, to it there's a downside and then when i saw that axes has this yeah, he's sort of had like a bad luck thing attached to him somebody mentioned it in the comments and i was like oh this guy's immortal more or less this he's and there's a downside to it um the only other immortal sort of downside person we know is hoid dawn shard potential perhaps perhaps that's as bad as far as i took it yeah, and interested in Spren and how things work. And obviously Hoyt is also interested in the workings of the Cosmere. I don't hate it. I don't hate yeah. it. I mean, it, you, you get the feeling that the dude is very powerful. Yeah. And I guess we'll get more excited once we know what the heck a Dawn Shard really is. <laughs> that is you a know? key piece of information that we are not <laughs> privy to at this moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, maybe we missed some hints in Dawn Shard itself. Dawn Shard is going to be a fun reread. Yeah. And, um, I believe in this chapter today, when we get to it, it's the first mention of a Dawn Shard in the whole series. So that'll be fun. Really? Though. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I guess it's it mentioned would. in passing as like a, you know, a fairy tale thing. Yeah. And it turns yeah. out that the fairy tales, they're real. All the fairy tales are real in Sanderson books. That's Tell I me think. one fairy tale that wasn't like part of the story. Like, oh, but actually the fairy tale's real. And here's the guy from it. From the sky. <laughs> saving the day <laughs> they're always in the sky it's always the sky the sky people yeah they always save the day that's why we're waiting for the people in the rocks am i all right oh Where are they? don't they're, even they're get me come right out of there yeah oh really got some theories this oh yeah, the epigraph theory you know the ones oh, that action yeah. fire killed the stream relentless before the heralds and then uh the the next one was they were suddenly dangerous like a calm day that became tempest like suddenly dangerous that means they weren't dangerous before i know people are probably thinking the parchment or something but i'm thinking rocks <laughs> people walking by rocks every day i got my mind on these rocks <laughs> they, they had no idea what they're up against man these rocks are keeping score yeah, we're not talking about Dwayne Johnson, okay? We're talking no. about real stone, limestone, yeah. gravel. <laughs> you got to watch out for gravel, man. They get kicked around quite a bit. They've got a lot of built-up tension. That's right. They're ready. They like got all that investiture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy's word of the week, investiture. He'll yes. get there. I'll pronounce it right one day. <laughs> one day. 
It was. I love that um, these epigraphs that we're going to get now are Yasna's notebooks. I feel. Like, I was going to ask you what these are. <laughs> I didn't yeah, it's remember. just Yasna's research. Oh. So, I think book five will be our research, like our notes on the rocks. You know, part one, and be like, Jimmy thought the rock bud that <laughs> soaked up blood. This rock bud is suspicious, Jimmy. Twenty twenty three. I need to write my own notebook. Can we call yeah. Yasna Yasna? Like Yas Queen. You know oh Yasna, I mean? yeah, okay. Yasna. <laughs> you gotta leave <laughs> yeah. your headset side when you do it. Oh okay, yeah, I'm following. All right, I'm down for that. Okay, You've good. Got Daddy Dalina and Yasna. And Yasna, you have to really <laughs> throw out the. Oh a. guys, you're missing off half the show with Jimmy's moves here. This I had to throw thing. a finger up and just. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice. Uh, yeah, by like, by words of radiance, no one's getting called by their normal name. There's no way. Words of Radiance, no one's going to be listening. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, guys, Lost in Obscurity, one episode closer. Yes, every single time. And speaking of Lost in Obscurity, uh, (laughs) I I believe uh, you're going to be looking for a replacement for me next week. Yeah, look, guys, I've held out long enough. What are we on, episode 19 now? It's time. Jimmy's done his time. There's one too many rock theories. You know, I play along. I do play along. I humor him, but now it's time to say goodbye. Um, Jimmy, what are you doing? What are you doing I am uh, going to the Sanderson Mansion. Believe it or not, he's been invited. <laughs> he's been invited. The Elantris Lounge awaits. Yeah, he's gonna have me break down white sand, and uh, I'm <laughs> I'm just thrilled. <laughs> I can't. If we ever get to like some Sanderson thing, how out of place are you gonna feel? <laughs> How, like you're gonna be there holding your, your your cup of orange juice like oh yeah just uh, in, a, in a tank top showing off the guns <laughs> like it's not gonna be good <laughs> while we all squabble over our theories down below yeah. yeah i'll just be taking part in the free food to be honest the soul cast <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're fixed. gonna be at the banquet table scarfing oh. down like dallin are in a stupor it's gonna be bad <laughs> Yeah, but Jimmy's busy next week, so I'll do my best. Um, I don't know people, but Jimmy does, so maybe we'll find somebody to uh, co-host. And uh, you say, on Bend the Knee, you say you call the banners. We need like a phrase for when one of us is away. What do we do? Like, oh, what, What's the equivalent of like, you know, here comes the cavalry in Stormlight? Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, my mind's going straight to Kremlings. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Like, You're calling for the Kremlin. I'm, su- I'm summoning the hive mind. That's oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's it. And then we should be thinking, is this a real guest? Just a bunch of Kremlings. We'll never know. You'll but never yeah, next know. week it might be somebody else or maybe me talking to myself in a room about rocks. Um, either way, it'll be a good episode <laughs> and we'll see you there. And uh, we're going to miss you, Jimmy, but um, the show must go on. Yes. And if I uh, if I pass away on my trip, you know, it's been nice doing the show with you guys and uh we can't just go part three dying and then you die that's not gonna listen i'm I'm dedicated to the themes okay it's (laughs) Uh, what do you think of this map of carbranth by the way oh yeah it's been a while since we've gotten a good map yeah i i absolutely love this picture so folks obviously we're audio here uh but right before chapter 29 if you have the trade paperback or the leather bound i assume uh there is a picture of carbranth and it just looks awesome it's a city built into the side of this mountain right at the port and i wish this was fully color and i would get a i would hang it on my wall like i have middle earth behind me i think it just looks nice it's awesome I um I was looking at it today. Do you see that um the ship on the bottom left? Yeah. I saw the the whatever you want to call it. Symbol. The sigil or the the symbol on it. I thought of pattern immediately. But I don't Ooh. think it is it is it something like that? Is that is that Shalan seeing a, a cryptic because this I believe this is Shalan's drawing, so is that Shalan seeing a cryptic? Another oh one hidden in her heart? Oh my god. It might be. Yeah, because I don't know what I don't recognize that symbol for for anything else. What if it? What if it's Luffy's? <laughs> yeah, imagine you just see like the Straw Hats Jolly Roger. That'd be great. Just Sanji yeah. with a nosebleed. <laughs> oh no! Um, but yeah, I think that's the only. I mean, Carbranth was one of the few places um, that is so well described that this image matched exactly what I thought. Now you're before. using your leather bound. Is it? Is it a color picture? 
So for the the ones that are sketches in the leather bound, they do like the blacks are now blues or Ooh. the grays are now blue. So it's got a bit of a that blue energy, but oh, it's still very much. Sick. Yeah, it's cool. Hey, does anyone know? Write us on the podcast if you know this. Can I get does anyone know where I can get that picture blown up as like a portrait? I would love to hang it in my room. Oh, man, I'd love some stormlight art to adorn my walls. <laughs> um, it's I like stuff like this, though. I wouldn't go for the hyper realistic. No, art. I'd like I'd like sketch sketch works or official artwork from the yep. books. Something more minimalistic. Yeah. Yeah. And like I have the bridge four poster, which is fine. It looks a little superhero. I, I like mm, I like landscapes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yes. Give me dusk and veil. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's a cool map. Finally, about time. I, I wish we could get these for like every location we travel to. That would be very fun. I totally agree. I think it would be very uh, on brand for our show, considering that we're lost in Roshar. Yeah, we are lost. We do need some additional aids to get around. We really do. We uh, originally, we were the aids to help you guys, but we're just as lost now. We don't. We yeah, we've we've led you astray at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're stuck. This was a this was a ruse, and you've fall, you've fallen for it. You're 19 episodes in. You're in. Too you've deep been now. scammed. We have taken nothing from you, but you've been scammed. Yeah, yeah. I, look, we're up to six cents in ad revenue. So, and the Kaladin crypto coin is going. <laughs> it is skyrocketing. You just told me to invest, and I just feel my life falling apart. Well, I'm trying to pump and dump, but just don't don't tell the listeners that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll cut that bit out. Yeah. Suckers. <laughs> so did you want to check out uh, one of the span reads before we get into the chapters today? Yeah. Yeah. We have a uh, span ride here from Simon R it says, hi guys. Love your podcast. Thank you, Simon. One of our Thanks, only, po- one of the only podcasts listened to regularly. And it's been awesome to follow along with you too. Anyways, my theory is one very broad and two, Ooh. just like my shoulders, and two, more of a literary <laughs> theme theory than an in, in universe one. Oh, Basi- I'll just mute my mic then. That's all you. Yeah, Jimmy. I'll take it from here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, we know Roshar has three moons: Seis. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher these. Sorry, uh, Seis, Nomon, and Mishim. These moons are colored violet, blue, and green, respectively. And Nomon is known by the singer as the as Honor's Moon. I believe that the other two moons are also related to shards based off of their color. Salas is odium, purple, void light. Mishim is cultivation, green, life light. Reading through the books, I noticed that the chapters where Brando Sando mentions a moon will tend to have something related to that moon shard occurring. Just something to keep an eye out for as you read. Keep up the good work. Really looking forward to next week's episode. Cheers, Simon. Well, Simon, thank you. Thank you for sending this in. This is very neat. That We've been cool. talking about colors, right? We talked about the the different bloods that we saw um, yes. that back in the prologue. And this is something I would love to keep an eye out for. I've never even really thought about Roshar's moons. Yeah. Moons uh, are something that I've always loved about Roshar. Because like I said, I always think about the adaptation. I'm always thinking about the visuals. And um, that's why I try to keep them in mind for nighttime scenes because it's not lit like a like an earth evening mm. where it's all got this white light we have all these different colors lighting the sky which lends a different tone to to the evening so yeah. i've always been quite interested in them and uh them being related to shards would be interesting because when once i start thinking about the cosmere i start thinking like oh what's on those moons you know because there's something yeah. there for sure there's something there the the names are the names are interesting i'd like to learn more about how, what, how and why they were named which i'm sure is one copper mind search away that i've probably already done um i like the connection that simon's made here purple odium green cultivation and uh nomon is always known as honor's moon i would love to go there that's my thing and we probably will <laughs> yeah. like, it doesn't seem that far-fetched eh? it doesn't We've been talking about Kaladin on, on the moon for literally years. Literally I mean, years. Like, I've been saying that that's the that's that's the bridge too far for your boy. Yeah. <laughs> once he's on the moon, you're like, I'm out. Yeah. Once he puts on the astronaut suit, it's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I I bet I bet Shard Plate would last in orbit. Oh, it's it already doubles, Halo. It doubles as. Oh yeah. Oh, Easily. Man. Space Easily. battles that would be kind of sick, actually. I mean. Yeah. 
they're coming. Whether we like it or not, we must accept the space battles. Yeah, I've that accepted way. that Stormlight is is going to go that way, probably. <laughs> Man, oh, it's hard to say, but like, yeah, by book 10, I can I, I can imagine some... Oh, I wonder what the leap will be. I do think about the techno- technological leap. Mm-hmm. Space race. Be, oh, man. Car brand know. versus a left car or something. I don't know. <laughs> I heard this uh, crazy theory that Eurythera was a spaceship. And I was like, just reading oh, that, oh my I God. was like, that's kind of cool. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, and that would be actually... Hmm. I wonder if Sanderson's a fan of Gene Wolf. That's because you told me. I, it made me think of what you told me about. I think is it this story? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. I, I don't. I would like to look more into that and see if we could find any evidence of it, like things being described one way that could be interpreted in another. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, as you read Yasna's notes, a lot of it is about Urtheru, and a lot of it is about before it was built. So, oh my god, and they talking spaceship. about where to where to put it. Um, and they're like, they're like, we specifically needed to put it here. So, I mean, it's a spaceship. <laughs> That's all it took. Cannon. <laughs> That's uh, canon. That's canon. There you go, guys. Looking at another theory. We need like a theory bingo for our show. We really or do. Like a, or like a Lost in Roshar drinking game. We should do a top te- our top 10 theories yeah. episode where oh, we just like pull our top 10 video. that we love and then top 10 that we actually think are true. Because those don't have to be mutually exclusive. Oh, yeah. Okay. I like that. Very efficient. I do, too. Uh, th- this was a great span read, Simon. Thank you for sending it in. Thank you. Um, these little things, you know, th- it doesn't always have to be a full-blown theory, but things like this that you've noticed that keep our eyes uh, peeled for, you know, as we go through this reread, I think it's actually a whole lot of fun. And uh, I'm down with some some moon, moon landing. Yeah, and spirit, I'm, so. I'm definitely down for that. And um to go back to a couple of other Spanish reads we got, when we're talking about um, where are all the songs in Rosha, where are all the the bars where we're having a drink with the hobbits and singing, and a lot of people um, span readed us about the Black Piper who did the album, the Storm the Stormlight Archive soundtrack, and they told us to check it out. Funny thing is, I interviewed those people. You should check it out on my channel. It's called Scoring the Way of Kings, and they're awesome. They're amazing people. I was able to interview and do a like light light little documentary where they gave me some footage and extra stuff to work with. Um, it's a good watch. I, I still stand by it. If you want to see the making of that album and how they did it, I loved, love talking to them and um, yeah, go check that video out. It's, it's very cool seeing books get soundtracks. It's like one step closer to the real adaptation, you know, one step closer. Yeah. And also, you know, for all those who said that, it, it kind of exposes that they haven't done their Lost in Rochar homework, bro. You know what? I thought you were subscribed, guys. False <laughs> false subs. No, it's all good. It's hard. YouTube is hard because what what is my channel now? It's a, it's a podcast channel. There's stuff on One Piece. There's some Stormlight stuff. If you're not, if you're not branded to one thing, a lot of your videos get lost in the ether. It's it's a tricky game you got to play on YouTube. It can be very, very difficult. Um, podcasting much more streamlined. Yeah, yeah. And um, you were you were smart in diversifying. You're like, I'm going to talk about my manga over here. I'm going to talk about Song of Ice and Fire over here, and my general books are here. Like, good move, mate. I have uh, done none of that. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I just uh, enjoy starting things, so that's it. Oh, okay, yeah, it's that feeling of, yeah, I have that problem too. I've got a lot of Stormlight video series. I'm like, and on the next episode, we'll look at this, and then there's no next episode. So Lost, I'm proud of Lost in Roshar for being the one thing I have stuck with, and we've reliably, besides one week where we took a week off, every week we've hit it, and every week we've talked about it. Um, so it's been great. It generates zero income. Hey, man. We're here for the. <laughs> we are here for the story, and we are uh, we are crowdsourced. We are crowdsourced. That's it. But um, take no crowdsourcing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, shall we? Is it time? Yes. Chapter? Talking Let's about arrogance, chapter twenty nine, which Ooh. is you know another kind of lame line from shallan that people love but uh <laughs> shallanism 
That's what it is. Shalanism. That is what it will be dubbed. The ones of ash and fire who killed like a swarm, relentless before the heralds, noted in Masley, page 337, corroborated by Colgan and Hazava. Uh, any of this have any significance for you, or are we just getting introduced to the new format of Epigraph? Ooh, okay. I'm in two minds about this. Okay. Because you're you're kind of pulling a shalon here. You're multiple minds, right? Yep, yep. My two sides are coming out. Ash and fire. Because like there's there's a forever a reference to burnt skin and burnt flesh, um, which ends up being like references to the Pashendi and the fuse and all their forms and stuff. Um, but the whole fire thing, ash and fire, it seems a little like it seems a bit different to just mm-hmm. like a straight up fused person. And then it says who killed like a swarm relentless before the heralds. Now it's like, which team are you looking at? Is this who the heralds are fighting or are these the old radiants who are fighting in front of the heralds as like their army? Hmm. So I'm like, is this, who's this referring to? Which side are we looking at? Or Maybe is there Kremlings a- possibly <laughs> a swarm of Kremlings, a swarm of Kremlings on fire. See that yeah, now. Once they get access to flame flowers, the cosmic is done. It's an absolute wrap. <laughs> what did you make of it? Did you just take this as the the Parshendi? Yeah, I just yeah. took it as a Parshendi. Um, I didn't feel like there was too much to dig into here, you know, unless if Fair swarm enough. is a is a signifier that we don't know about yet, that it could be mm-hmm. possibly, but Ash and Fire just feels like a weird weird description. Almost sounds like they're emerging from like the crust, like you know, the core of Roshan yeah, like, or something. It just doesn't like I don't think of ash and fire when I think of the fused. Me either. But maybe yeah. we're maybe we're wrong. I don't know. It just feels like there's um I also think about the last planet that the humans came from is called Ashen. Oh, that's it. And then I then someone pointed out, which was great, that Shinova, like shin ashin that's why mm-hmm. they named the shin which is very cool um that was a great oh I, I should it was like the top comment on our last episode on youtube where someone spoke about that shinava was actually a piece of ashen that was moved over to roshar like they actually took that chunk of land and plonked it there um and i thought that was very very cool yeah here i'll read it. it's from uh dylan uh, it says my crack theory, crackpot theory about Shinovar is that it's not truly part of Roshar. It's a chunk of Ashen uh, that the Bondsmith used connection manipulation shenanigans onto to transport the refugees away while the world was ending. That's why everything in Shinovar is wildly different from every other part of Roshar. Maybe the spread don't manifest there often because the connection shenanigans used to get the land there weren't exactly the most expertly executed methods. So the spread don't have the same connection as the rest of Roshar. I think he, I think he might've nailed it. I really think he might've nailed it. And then he doesn't, he, someone went on to say that like, maybe the prologue happened in Shinova. That's why we didn't see any spread. And I was just like, these, these comments are awesome. It's all, yeah, it's all man. Coming together. I think they're right. Yeah, and then uh, someone underneath said it's pretty likely that their ancient orders could change an entire valley by means similar to soul casting. I'm pretty sure that the only things that made it uh, from Bray's is Irithiru, which I believe is a spaceship of some kind. Oh, there we go. There it is. It's all come full circle. Oh, I love that. And then someone said, you think the Stour is a spaceship? Did you read Rhythm of War? <laughs> yeah, like we know that like the siblings there and there's all this stuff to say it wasn't a spaceship, but how much fun is it to think of it as one? Like, yeah. like a launch station or something. Can't you can't you picture it? I could picture it. Yeah, man. Uh there, there's another comment that says uh the there was an event called Shin Invasions in the past where the Shin swept through Roshar with mounted horses and there was no defense against. This made a Lethkar update their war going style to incorporate horse in the infantry. So to say Shin doesn't have an army is incorrect. Imagine Shin like the Mongolians in the past for us sweeping through Roshar. Well, you know what that makes me think about, right? Because I've always had this gap in my chronology when I think of Roshar. So the humans came from Ashen. And we know that's Shinova was the home base or whatever. That's where they set up. And that's why the Shin look a bit different. They think Seth's weird basically because he's white and he has 
large eyes and they like childlike eyes or whatever. Um, but Alethkar and the rest of Roche are very different looking humans. So did they come from a different place or is that, does they, does all lineage of humans go back to Shinova or are there other starting points for humans on Rosha? Oh my, That's my gosh. Question. That feels like a curveball. That could be likely. Right. Ooh, well, we don't know. Like we don't know. Um, maybe Ashen had all those types of humans, all different races and backgrounds. And then they all dispersed from Shinova. But it seems like Zeth kind of just looks like your average Shin person. Yeah. It's See, not like there's a m- much variety that we've seen. They all seem like to be the same background. I'm not sure, but yeah. I, I, I like where you're where you're going with this, right? Because we have like the, the Hadassians or the the Horn Eaters. Sorry, the Horn Eaters that mm-hmm. have some part, listener blood in them. So there was some interbreeding, but that's just one. That, that's one answer. What about like just the Alethi? Where'd they come from? It's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm just asking the questions. I'm yeah. Just, I don't have any. Yeah. I don't have any uh, resolution for it, but. <laughs> Maybe a lot of people emigrated to Rosha. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's actually more of a destination than we realize, which does kind of make sense for all the powerful stuff that's here. Uh, you know, it seems to be a, of interest to the people in the Cosmere as is. So. I wonder know. where. Yeah. Because then the question becomes, where did humans start? in the cosmere did like earth oh do you think earth's a cosmere planet he's got like I an earth not. goblet I, <laughs> no, I don't think so i would not like but, that because i know there's humans on yolan which seems to be the home planet of the cosmere it's where hoid's from it's where all the shards like where they where they picked up the shards from all those people are from that one planet is that where everything started um, but then some of those people can also turn into dragons. So like, is that a human anymore? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm just saying, usually you can trace it all back to one, one spot more or less. Right. It would be weird if humans started in two places in the Cosmere. Right. Yeah. So is, in that way is everyone like a refugee or an immigrant? Yeah. I don't think it's impossible for that to be the case at all. Yeah. It's totally possible. Do you think it's something he would answer? If it ties into one of the stories, yes. Like if it has significance Mm. for the plot, which it could maybe. Because one thing he says he's not answering is like the afterlife and death. He's like, I'm not answering that in the Cosmere. I'm not answering what happens. And Hmm. I want to leave that as like some esoteric mystery sort of thing. Uh, I don't know if we'll get, but I could see the origin of certain races and people's being addressed Mm -hmm. and like because there's so many weird powers and interesting i don't know combinations i don't know what constitutes an actual baseline human anymore (laughs) in these books like what is your average human hmm an interesting thought it is yeah and uh, hmm could there be a chance that they all spawn from different places, but they're of the same, you know what I mean? Like they're all yeah. still the same or they're slightly Like different? did the shards have ability to create like the, the actual inhabitants? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that That's it. That's the question, right? Yeah. Like how, yeah, I guess we don't know. Cause it seemed mm-hmm. like honor went to these planets and there was stuff already there. And he's like, all right, well I'll, I'll just give them this and that. It's not like he made them as far as yeah. I understand it. So where'd they come from? Who knows, man? The everlasting question. Let 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 Brandon tell us. Yeah, where, where okay. I'm going to stop trying to figure out the origin of life. <laughs> I love it. Um, I arrogance. Get, We're back to the chapter, eh? Yeah, I'll Brandon. give a little plot summary so people know what's going on yeah. with it. I know people like when yeah. we do that. Um, so we open up the chapter. This is a Shalon chapter, thank God. And Shalon is talking <laughs> to her brothers and Balat Devar's betrothed uh, Elita, is that oh, you yeah. say it? Elita, uh, yeah. Tavanar, Elita. We'll go with that. Yeah, I like um, 
Yeah, Ailita Tavanar over Span Reed and her quarters discussing how to get Yasna's soul, Yasna's soul caster. Um, she considers how difficult it be, you know, with not falling in love and the freedom that she's being afforded. And then they inform her that Luesh has died, which was her dad's um, friend or kind of assistant. And then there's also mm-hmm. thoughts that Luesh is the one who actually brought the soul caster, which she ends up hearing from uh, Black himself. And yeah. says that there's been friends, people coming over that have the same Ooh. symbol tattooed on their thumb that the same pendant that Luesh wore, uh, which I need to ask you about. Uh, and then the conversation ends and Shalom burns a transcript sitting in the room. A few hours later, she's studying about the Alethi monarchy and she <laughs> does not like them. And Yasna overhears her not liking <laughs> them. And then they have a kind of a back and forth about the Alethi. And Shalom wonders why she is researching events as recent of the, as the murder of King Gavilar, to which Yasna replies that she thought to ease Shalon into true scholarship this way. The discussion moves on to Shalon's habit of saying the first passable clever thing that comes to her mind and the incompetence of her former tutors and their punishments. Oof. Yasna believes wit would find her amusing. They move on to talk about what Shalon has learned about Gavilar's murder and later about youth and scholarship. Shalon wonders what it is uh, that Yasna is working on. Two hours later, we see the big bad Taravangian walk in. Cool. Uh, yeah, comes into the balcony during their lunch. And after Yasna breaks the silence with a question about his granddaughter, he asks about Yasna's soul caster, but Yasna evades the question. He then asks Shalon if she would do a drawing of him, which he intends as a gift for his granddaughter. While Shalon is drawing, Taravangi- <laughs> Taravangian and Yasna discuss the Almighty. Yasna's lack of faith in the concept of right and wrong. When inspecting her finished picture, Shalon realizes that she has drawn some creatures with symbols as heads. These are cryptics. She hurriedly crumples the page and claims to have made a mistake. She offers to do a new one of the king by the end of the day. After the king has left, Yasna and Shalon talk about him, during which Yasna claims to not be close to the possibility that she may join a devotary at some point. And the two continue the discussion about faith and Yasna tell Shalon to get on with her sketch of the king. So, you know, this is basically between Yasna and Shalon for the most part, except for that nice little juicy beginning part that we'll see talking about mm-hmm. the ghost bloods and such. Uh, and then the Taravangian appearance, which, you know, never feels like he is accidentally in a scene, right? No, not anymore. No, not anymore. I got a question for you, dude. Okay. Is his granddaughter real? What do we know about her? Who? And by the way, who are Taravangian's kids that he has a granddaughter? Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> who are they? I don't think we've ever been introduced to them. That's a good question. Because it just always, to me, it's been Taravangian, the boy himself, but and his, like, diagram um, comrades. Never really mentioning names of the family. They're not showing up. Like, the granddaughter's mentioned in passing. She was trapped behind the rock. That's a paid actress as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you know, like who are these people? That is, a, that is a, a very good point you bring up. Cause I don't recall any specific information about his lineage or his family. Yeah. And maybe I'm forgetting. I mean, that's, that's definitely possible in the later books, but yeah. Hmm. But it's just like, okay. So I'm finding that he has a few grandchildren, but here we go. He goes, is it, it is unknown if this grandchild is a sibling or cousin of Tara Vangian's other grandchildren. It's all about the grandchildren. Who are the parents? Like, who are his kids? I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it could be a sus. Like, maybe he's pretending. To, for what, though? I don't know. Well, he's, he's become king of Carbranth. I'm right. guessing via lineage. Um, is he pretending that the line is still going? Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, he doesn't have an heir. All right. So we've got, oh, here. Yeah, I've got a page. So Savrahalidem, <laughs> also known as Savri. Thank God. Um, to those close to her, queen of Carbranth. She is Taravangian's daughter and has multiple children. Savri disavows her father Taravangian after his betrayal in the battle of Emul, Carbrandt declared itself neutral in the conflict with their surgeons aiding whichever side petitions them. This is from Rhythm of War. So, like, not until book four is, is like, a daughter even considered. I don't know. It just feels a little loose for, for a series this tight with all these intricate families. Why the heck is Taravangian's family so elusive to us? Could be a plant. That's all I'm saying. 
Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out exactly why. Yeah, like what would be the like what's what's I mean? Is it just because he knows he's doing nefarious things? Yeah, or is it like did he did his like um, visit to the Night Watcher make him infertile or something? Ooh. I but like I guess that. his boon was whole, like his whole like dumb one day smart the other thing, not a, not anything else. I yeah, don't know, it just feels weird to me. Like with these royal families and these kings and queens, it's all about the family, dude. They're all they're all, you know, they're around constantly. Um, not a family mystery in Stormlight, huh? Yeah, yeah. But Brandon insists he's not doing like family, like retcons and secrets but it's hard not to feel like oh i love yeah. family retcons and secrets <laughs> yeah i know that's like the best that's the family best drama part. is what's hot right now the fall yeah. of house <laughs> usher and secession oh, house yeah. of the dragon it's all about the family yeah well about that's all family. that's what i'm trying to say yeah, breaking it's... bad about yeah. the family yeah it's the one thing we can all kind of relate to unless you tire of engine no, that's your Teravangian, and you hire a crisis actor to get stuck exactly. on a wall. They're like, look, he's like, just go behind the wall. I'm pretty sure the skull's magical. It's, it's going to be fine. I've had you it. Know? I've had it with this. He's a, he's a pretender, and this family's, they're a bunch of cardboard cutouts. Yeah. I don't believe it. Not buying it. That's my theory. Lock I'm with in. you. Yeah. It's all hogwash. What do you, what do you make of uh, the beginning of this chapter here? Oh, and oh, a, there has to be yeah. some significance to Ailita, right? Yeah, well, I wanted there to be because I did. I was like, okay, as soon as she showed up, I'm like, who, who, who are you? Why are you writing? Why have you got the keyboard? You know. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, because females <laughs> write. Um, she's with Nan Balat, and the more I looked into it, it just literally just seems like she's with him. Maybe there's some big twist coming around that she's like a double agent for the Ghost Buds, but I think she just might. She maybe it's just that simple that she's with Shalan's brother. And uh, she's, you know, helping out. I don't know. Did you did you do any any googling, any researching into her? I'm doing it right now. Uh, okay. It doesn't it doesn't seem like there's much no. interesting here. Actually, no. it's un- it's unfortunate. But I had I had the same like little tickle in my in my brain where I'm like, oh, look, let's look into her and figure it out. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of like sus lines in this in this opening much to do with the ghost bloods before that though it says um you know she's thinking about her father um she they've been stealing uh, um what was this um for years he'd been stealing things from their father and selling them to cover his losses oh yeah it's her gambling brother yeah and then she's like and all things considered he couldn't really be blamed for much of what he'd done None of them could. Re- talking about all of her siblings. So none of them could be blamed for all the things they've done. Because why? Why would you think that? Hmm. Why would there be no accountability? Besides like you've got an abusive dad. <laughs> I guess that, maybe that might be it. It might just be that. but Or, or is this like a, another bit of foreshadowing that, that Shalan's family is under some sort of influence of, of either an unmade or some herald family nonsense that they're all uh, they've all got these vices and they're all damaged maybe it purely is from the trauma um i just thought that was a little bit of a cheeky line regardless though basically we get confirmation that her dad was working with the ghost bloods this lewish dude who was helping her dad was a double agent for them and he has been killed um, and apparently died in his sleep peacefully. I don't know if I buy yeah. that. All right. <laughs> I think he just became not as useful. Yeah, or, or, I think that's that, right. Yeah, I think uh, they're closing in. And maybe he was trying to protect the kids, possibly. Maybe he was trying to maybe. give them more time, jerking them around, you know? Yeah, maybe he had a bit of an affinity for them after living with them for so long. Like, the um, I just wonder why, how the heck her dad fell in with the ghost bloods. Yeah, because it's like he shows up. So, um, Lewis joined the Devar household circa 1172 and he quickly became a confidant of Lynn Devar. So, mm. and, and, so, and Lewis is the guy who starts this, he like comes with the brochures and stuff. Yeah, and then he has the, the illicit soul caster, Fabriel, right? So, it's like, oh. <sighs> 
Wait, does it say Luesh gave the soul car? So did I, did I, is that something I've missed? Was presumably the person mm. who gave Lynn. So we don't know that's a fact. Yeah. Okay. Because look, hear me out, right? So if you know that a herald is around mm-hmm. and okay, let's say you're the ghost blood, you're going to a new place. You're like, look, we've got to scout out some important people on this planet to do our business let's go to the herald family am i right yeah let's go to whoever's had kids with the herald and let's see what they're up to i'm just saying it fits the theory it fits at least it fits that shallan's family's important point has blank to right. has to be i mean why would, why else would they and why would Lewis choose i mean i guess they are kind of involved in the politics of the region but possibly wouldn't, yeah. but wouldn't be wouldn't it be better for them to be involved in like a bigger house or a bigger area you know yeah yeah it's like out of all the people charlotte's family so and like we know the ghost bloods are not from here so they obviously have to go for sort of the big players or like you know, they need to go through people who seem vastly important, I'm supposing, not some random minor house for whatever reason. But then the question begs, like, why would they give him a soul caster? And, like, what what is what is their aim? Do they just know that there's possible radiance? Is it because Shalan? They, they knew about Shalan, maybe. Because the magic of Rojas only kicking in now, right? Yeah. And we know Shalan had bonded Spren as early as as being a kid. So maybe they'll clued into that and then visited. That could be it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if if it's if it's gonna be something where like, you know, Shalan's mom's not a herald, uh, then then maybe that would be just her being a kid with powers. Yeah, like, oh, so this is how they use Stormlight here. Yes. With, and there's this little girl who can do it. Hey dad, um, take this magical bracelet that can change the the forms of things maybe and and this is why she's been so sheltered she's part of the investment i mean yeah yeah maybe like she was a little project of theirs it doesn't really explain non uh balant maybe being controlled by yeah that that is then there's that big thing right yeah i i i there's more there's yeah there's definitely more but i think we're asking the right questions yeah i feel like we're um did you, did you remember that game la noir i feel like we're i've been playing it actually i, <laughs> oh, I seriously i mean it's been a couple months now but yeah I, I finally started playing it for the first time this year and uh it's a lot of fun yeah we're, we're those two guys we got our little fedoras on with <laughs> suit and ties yeah like, you're being a wise guy <laughs> yeah. so you down at the pool hall smacked your wife around a little bit huh? <laughs> maybe you gotta carry away we just keep visiting shalon's house and we get a few clues right but with our notebooks we keep crossing out things we're not quite there but i'm pressing x to doubt that's all i'm doing (laughs) i'm pressing x such an obscure reference i love it yeah (laughs) was there Um, anything else from this little back and forth here that you thought was uh, interesting uh, i mean okay a couple things i guess i I just liked the very cool moment of like you know as they write in a span read you see their their writing exactly i like i think it's a very cool thing that they can draw the ghost blood symbol and it like shows up on the paper it kind of reminded me of when um harry in like in harry potter is writing into the diary and the words are coming up that kind of suspense and magical mystery what a throwback yeah it took me to that um i found it funny when non blots like i i tried to suggest to like these ghost blood people that, that they should back me but then they just started laughing it's like they're like bro you don't know how deep this goes um, so it shows his ignorance to whatever these ghost floods are. It shows that it was a purely their dad thing, or at least not Nambalant and Shalan. Maybe the other bro- brothers were a bit clued in, but I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, uh, but not really, not really. Um, so do you want to jump to the Yasna bit? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, five hours later, she comes in, they're talking about the monarchy. They're kind of going back and forth. Um, it, a lot of this feels like it's, Shalon struggling with the fact that she has some freedom. She also seems to really enjoy the work that she's getting to do under Yasna. Like it's kind of mm. what she's always wanted to do. And I think part of her is thinking about betraying her family. Yeah. It's just like, she's finally getting a lot of what she's always wanted research, yeah. validation, freedom, 
being mentally stimulated and challenged. It's hard to hard to uh, go back to the original plan. Um, they have a lot of interesting philosophical conversations about research and history and eventually religion with Tara Mangian, who like barely puts up a fight. Uh, he must have been <laughs> having a bad day. Um, but here, I'll read this line, which was the first Dawn Chart thing. Um, it's actually via Shalan who, who says it. A mythical treasure, brightness, much like Dawn Shards or Honor Blades, certainly worth seeking, but only with great caution. Now, Honor Blades, we know, are like, it's a weapon. So you're like, oh, yes, we should be cautious. Why would she say that Dawn Shards should be? I don't know. Like, I just, I wonder how that she would lump them into the same. Shalon has a Dawn Shard. <laughs> Everybody's got a Dawn Shard. <laughs> there we go. I mean, there's four of them, which makes it actually good to theorize about because not everyone can have one. Hmm. Um, I don't think she does, though. But the fact is, yeah, oh, there we go. <laughs> That's not, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll pick that up. Because we've got to remember, like, the Dawn Shards are like the the, the beginning of the Cosmere, like the four major forces of the entire world of Sanderson. I don't know if they'll all be, like, related to Roshar. I'm sure he'll sprinkle them around his series, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably likely. Um, another cool line was when that Yasna said, I suspect that Wit at least would find you amusing. Um, they've already met, which is neat to know because he shows up in the Shalam flashbacks when she's a kid. I like, forgot this. Yeah. So I thought that was a little like that was a little fun. cheeky reference. Nice. I yeah, love it. Yeah, like they've already met. Um there's just a lot of cool little lines that she talks about the sun maker was only 17 when he began his conquest. This guy who like conquered half of Rosha. The the name Sunmaker really, I don't know. I feel like that's a theory waiting to happen. Yeah. And then she talks about another person who was 20 when she uh, proposed the theory of the three realms. So like spiritual, cognitive, and physical. That's cool. Like that someone figured that out somehow, like hundreds of years ago on this planet. Um, but um, f- for me, like there's a lot of interesting chats between them too. But when, when Tara Vodium walked in, that's when I, my ears pricked up. A terrorodium. Like, oh, totem. Yeah, totium. Totium. Uh, what did you make of him today? You know, I just think he's sus. Yeah. Like at every every aspect, I think he's trying to interfere. I think mm-hmm. he's trying to um eject himself. He's trying to get more information. I think he had an idea that Shalon was gonna be drawing cryptics. Maybe he was testing it. I, so my mind went to the same place, right? I'm like, oh, he's just, he's like, Shalon, draw me a picture. <laughs> like, let's see how good you are. Yes. But the thing is, right, I think he's on to Yasna because he, you know, that's, we've already seen that with the whole, like, my granddaughter's stuck, Ugh, yeah, liar. Um, but we saw that. I think he's, I don't necessarily know if he's on to Shalon. I think maybe he's curious about why uh, Yasna's with Shalon, like what she saw in her. But I don't know if he has, like, a proper read that Shalan's a radiant. He's just assuming if Yasna has taken on somebody, which she never does, that there has to be yeah. significance to her. Yeah. 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 For sure. So, and what I made of this, I don't think Tara Rangian was playing dumb in this scene. I think he was like having one of those days actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, I think he was having one of his like, um, compassionate days as they call them. You know, he's a little sweetie pie. Um, just wants a little portrait for his granddaughter. <laughs> that um, doesn't exist. Yeah. He, <laughs> what if his granddaughter died and he forgets? Yeah. What if she's Sad. still, what if she's actually is trapped somewhere? She's still trapped in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. This is why well, I mean, she, whoever that was is out, but yeah, maybe she, she did die or something. And he's just like, yes, my family. Um, there was a, did you catch this? I'm trying to find it. Oh, yeah. Um, when uh, Yasna was saying that Tyramagin will be forgiven. And he's like, forgiven? Me? The elderly man seemed to find that amusing. And for a moment, Shalan thought she saw deep regret in his expression. Unlikely, but that is something else entirely. 
Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. There it was. Yeah. Right in front of us the whole time. Yep. Tyrangian. He he's like he's just thinking about his hospitals. That's what he's thinking about. Um but yeah, the cryptics were watching Shalan. I guess I started to think about why they were watching Shalan, because she's already got Shalan's whole thing is very weird because she's had a sprain that she killed when she was young, but then also Patton's still in the picture, but that bond is a bit tenuous. So are they are the cryptics just hanging out and being like What's this girl doing? Are we going to give her a new sponsor? Are we going to give her a patent? Maybe they're just like keeping an eye out on Shalan. It's I find it very cool that she's that uh, they show up in her drawings. It shows that when she takes a memory, it's not just it's also a memory of what's happening in Shadesmar, which is very cool. Yes, and it seems to be that many groups of beings find Shalan to be interesting. Oh, what are you getting at? Are you saying ghost pods or? No, I'm just, I mean, it, you know, if we're going to tie it in to, to her with the ghost bloods and you got the, mm-hmm. pat, like she killed the spread and all this, and then she's taken on by Yasna, she just seems to be followed or given opportunity. She's, mm. she's very special. Yeah. People are drawn to her for different reasons. You're right. And, um, yeah, it, a lot of it has to do with the sus lineage. A lot of it has to do with her bonding with Spren. Um, mm. It's, I liked it. was interesting to me because, like, I forgot how highly everyone thought of Tarabangian before he went like fully <laughs> evil maniac. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's like, man, he reminds me of Dalinar. Uh, and I just felt like <laughs> thematically interesting considering they're like going to be like adversaries now, like completely against each other in the yeah. most serious, high and stakes kind of things, way. Yeah. And handle things totally, have a totally different outlook of what saving means. Yeah. Yeah, so God, I, I can't like wait to read Oathbringer. And oh, ugh. I know because I, yeah, I feel like it shows that Sanderson was placing us this whole Dalinar Taravangian d- d- dynamic. He was ready and for it. Part of me just wants to rip through the rest of this book, and like, I wish we were reading it faster. But like, I know we like that's not what the podcast is, obviously. But like, there's part of me it's like, man, maybe I should just read ahead. <laughs> yeah, so I have that. I had that feeling too, especially with these two chapters. I'm like. There's more meat we could have got if we did yeah. a few more. So I was thinking three for next week potentially, but it depends on who, who, who we have on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but in terms of theories and stuff, I think I'm all out for this chapter. I thought it was very neat though that the cryptics yeah. are there. Anytime Yasma's there and uh, and Taravangi, Taravangi and I'm going to be happy with it. So yeah. uh, we move on to the less interesting chapter, in my opinion. That's chapter 30, Darkness Unseen. This is, uh, you know, sad boy Kaladin. And the epigraph says they were suddenly dangerous, like a calm day that that became a tempest. And uh, you know me. You know what I think. I think I think it's uh, rocks. Do you, <laughs> which I love. I'm never going to argue against that. Did you what do you, did you get the obvious reference of just parchment? being awakened that's what i that's immediately what i i I mean yeah that's probably what it is yeah yeah yeah, for sure but um way better if it's rocks (laughs) yeah it better be rocks honestly Uh, it says this fragment is the origin of a phalan proverb that was eventually reworked into a more common uh derivation i believe it may reference the void bringers see ixis's emperor fourth chapter (laughs) so do we have any reference to that uh i don't think so <laughs> i mean maybe i i am almost certain if you look up ixus's emperor fourth chapter it'll just be like this was mentioned in jasna's notebook as another reference um if, if can you imagine if he had all these books ready to go Re- like give me actually, that forget the secret projects give me that yeah, give me ixix emperor fourth chapter <sighs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just another scholarly article, right? Are you, yeah, you there's anything? nothing. There's nothing yeah. on yeah. <laughs> on this anywhere, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'll give a little summary here. Uh, this is Kaladin and Gaz back and forth. Um, but it starts with Kaladin, and he leaves the barracks with the first light of day in rather good spirits as he followed all 29 members of Bridge Four. He thinks uh, that the last holdout, Bazig, might have been bullied by Teft and Rock and Rock, but chooses to ignore it. If Kaladin 
Uh, I'm sorry. Kaladin has his bridge men do exercises for the military day stretches, jumping motions to warm up. Several carpenters and soldiers are watching and laughing at them. Kaladin notices Gaz. Um, and then Gaz is contemplating the loss of his eye uh, and what the ensuing darkness could be hiding. Very interesting. When mm. Lamarill calls him over to pay his bribe, Gaz only has half of it. One topaz mark, but Lamarill's more interested in Kaladin, noting him as a problem for Gaz. So Gaz is very unsettled by all this training and didn't realize that, you know, Kaladin actually had military training at this point, And that's kind of what the bridge four stuff is looking like. Uh, Gaz and Lemuel discuss the use of bridgemen and that Kaladin could become even more dangerous. Gaz offers to kill him, but worries about the loss of Kaladin's <laughs> bribes. Lamriel tells him not to because he would make young bridge leader into a martyr. He wants Kaladin to fail on a run before leaving he threatens gaz to make him a bridgeman himself gaz worries if kaladin does get killed he gaz still might end up as a bridgeman for not paying off his debt to lamoral so gaz is in a pretty hard place obviously and then we see the infamous side carry <laughs> hashtag side carry hashtag carry it <laughs> on side um so as he sends his team for a break he considers the last two weeks were part lucky since they had only had two runs and one where they were late they'd only lost two men a mark and kolf and only one had two had been wounded narm and pete um he tells teft rock and scar and modash about the side carry it's very awkward to carry that way so they ask him why they should try it he doesn't reveal his shield idea but instead tells them they can use different muscles before leaving moash wants to know why kaladin made him a squad leader after uh, uh after Kaladin tells him it's because he is strong willed, he tells Kaladin that he doesn't trust or like him, but is obeying because he's curious what would happen. Gaz is very stunned by the side carry, but he thinks that it's probably a good way to get them killed. So he suggests, hey, you know, I like what you're doing. Trying to yeah. try a bridge run. And Gaz is hoping that they die. Kind of. It was so sus. Like, oh, yes, innovation, new things. Go for it, guys. We love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you put in- that on your performance review. <laughs> oh, Gaz. Subtle as a sledgehammer, you. Sledgehammer. Um, I liked getting in his head, though. It was nice. It was like, oh, yes. It's all yeah. been through Kaladin's eyes. Maybe he is a bit, you know, harsh on Gazzy boy. Yeah, I like the idea of getting another POV's heads. You know, a lot of times in epic fantasy, we feel like we have to be only in a main character's head. But some of my favorite series like Malazan and even the Song of Ice and Fire later in the series gets they start jumping to some more uh, what we consider side characters. Mm. And, you know, Gaz is a side character that we have felt a certain way about. So getting to see it through his eyes not only shows us a little bit more of an evil person, a more conflicted person, uh, mm. but someone who is not considered just like a hero or a protagonist yeah. through his eye, Jimmy. Oh, how insensitive of me how <laughs> how rude of me <laughs> terrible um yeah yeah absolutely and there's a lot of uh you know the beginnings the the seeds are planted here the seed of moash and kaladin the seed of gaz is you know there's hope for gaz he can he can be better which we see with shalan and the seed that lamaril is gonna get executed boy in a few chapters um, middle management Gaz has his own middle manager <laughs> right above him, Lamarill. Um, so we see, interestingly, the same way that Kaladin looks at Gaz, Gaz looks at his boss, and we're all just stuck in a hierarchy. Yep, all cogs in the wheel, man. Yeah, that's it. Um, wheel of time. Oof, maybe. Yikes. <laughs> um, I wanted so bad for um, the my crackpot theory, crackpot theory to be right that Gaz is seeing Spren in his in his eye that's missing because he eventually becomes a squire of Shalan and can do some light weeby things. Huh. We had that very sus line of like, um, he, he thought there was like a little Spren burning in his eye or something. Like, what's in there? Just like a rat eating at a wine at a wine skin. There's yeah, what, what's in the darkness, right? Yeah, like, and it was. Oh, I love that last line where he's like, "Gaz continued to watch Kaladin's crew, and still that darkness waited for him, like an itch that couldn't be scratched, like a scream that couldn't be silenced, a tingling numbness that he could never be rid of. It would probably follow him even into death." Oh, look at look at Brando channeling some George right there. That's pretty good. Yeah, not too bad, not too shabby there, Sando. Um, yeah, 
And I don't think that is the case. I don't think there is a spren in his eye. <laughs> I think it's just like him talking about um, Gaz's paranoia as well as, you know, the loss of his sight. Um, what I, another neat literary, look at me with the literary. Whoa, um, whoa. I, I'm not all theories here, guys. I am paying attention. Um, what I <laughs> what I saw here, he found a half finished bridge. This is Kaladin looking at the carpenters. It had eventually grown out of that one plank that Kaladin had used, and I just thought, you know what? What a metaphor! Kaladin started working out with that plank, and everyone judged him, and no one was listening to him. And look at him now; he's got this bridge crew around him. They're listening to him. They're respecting him. And just like Kaladin, that plank grew into its own larger bridge as well. Have I have I nailed that one, Jimmy? Give me that one. Come on. That's I think something. you nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> you. You made me proud. That was amazing. Yeah. I loved yeah. it. Finally. Not a theory, just an observation. Finally, finally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just... And the only other real bit that stood out to me was Calvin's absolutely savage sarcasm when Gaz pointed at them doing the side carrying. And he's like, what is that? And Calvin's like, bridge crew carrying what i believe is yes it's a bridge you idiot um that was quite nice but otherwise pretty chill chapter pretty pretty chill makes me regret doing two this week but alas eh, it's all right i mean mm. we had a we had a good span read and everything and, and this this is kind of a simple simple chapter yeah uh, we're seeing the evolution of bridge four we see Calden scheming we see gaz being more in tune that you know Calden's not just high strung but all these people who've been making fun of Kaladin, I think Gaz is starting to see the fact that, you know, this is legitimate. And obviously, uh, Lamoral is is very concerned. So mm-hmm. he's starting to turn some heads. And that's not necessarily the right thing you want to do when you're at the bottom of the cast system. And <laughs> this is what it's all getting at. And then, of course, Bridge 4. Bridge 4 is still being formed. We're not just jumping into best friends territory. These chapters are necessary. Yeah, it's the stepping stones, right? Yeah. Um, that's right. The Shalan chapter was very fun to delve into, though. Lots of, uh, I mean, to anything with Taravangian, I'm like, so I get excited. I'll keep saying it until my throat goes hoarse, is that Shalan <laughs> chapters are the best. Yeah. Well, some listeners say you're giving too much credit, Jimmy, but I'm with you. Shalan right. has been the most ent- entertainment value-based chapters so far in this reread. I'm saying it. I'm with you, mate. She she has the most lore, still a ton of the mystery, and the ghost bloods are probably probably the best thing in Stormlight? Question mark. Best mystery, right? Yeah. Though well, Irithiru being a spaceship or Shivar <laughs> being a you know pulled over from a bondsmith from another planet, all that I'm see, in that's, for. But that's where I'm at. That's that's, that's a wild wild yeah. leap. But I'm down. Yeah, I'm down, dude. But I'm pretty sure um Shalan's Hashtag side carrying this novel. Am I right? I agree. <laughs> yeah, I'm just so excited to get the words of radiance. And then like, I, I'm most excited for Oathbringer and rhythm of war because <laughs> so all three, all three next books. <laughs> yeah. If I had to put them in order, I would say in the order, I'm excited to reread them. And I, and I have to approach this from like the chapter by chapter approach, because if mm. it was just straight reading the books, I would say words of radiance because it's one of my favorite fantasy books. But chapter by chapter, I'm most excited for Rhythm of War, then Oathbringer, then Words of Radiance, because I think in Mm. that order are the ones I got the least out of as far as like connections and stuff and stuff that did go over my head for sure. in Rhythm of War will will be a lot more digestible and consumable whenever we get there doing it chapter by chapter. I'm inclined to agree with you. I might switch Oathbringer and Rhythm of War around, though. My only thing is Dalinar's backstory, unless we get into Dalinar's backstory and we start seeing other hints of big stuff. Now, I that think because, would be sick. Yeah, because of how big Dalinar is being pushed up to for the next book, I think uh, there'll be a lot there. Okay. Like foreshadowing. Now, that gets me excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I feel like I know Dalinar's backstory. We've, I, we've done it. You know, yeah. I, I, that's not that's the backstory. I'm le- and I know that sounds weird, but that's the backstory I'm least excited to read again. Just because yeah. I remember it so well. Because it was but it's awesome. still the best one. I loved it. It's my favorite ways. one. Yeah. But 
it feels like I read it yesterday still, you know? Dang, okay. I don't really have that. I'm like, okay, absent father. Then we have the whole rift scene with his wife. But beyond that, it's You're just, right, though. There's going to be a lot of foreshadowing. There's going to be a lot of clues. And I'm going to come out of it being like, it's even better than before. And you know, and you know who's there, right? Gavala. <laughs> That's true. He's there, dude. And we're going to be watching him very closely. Like a hawk. Yeah. Yeah. So I think every that will word make it, he utters will be. Yeah, oh, oh, imagine we get all the words he says. And then we like combine it into this document. <laughs> like the ending of book 10. It's a cipher, bro. Yeah. Oh, see. All right. Well, stay tuned, guys. That's uh, that's happening in about six years. <laughs> we'll we'll get it. there eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? I wonder if we'll keep this format forever. Maybe things will change. They know. could. They could. Who knows? They could change. We'll see how we do. Maybe we'll disappear. Um, <laughs> Who knows? Maybe part three dying. Let's you know. No. No. Let's not. <laughs> let's not end it on that. Let's not end it on that ominous. Oh no. We'll be back. At least I'll be in the um. If I if I deem that Jimmy can return in two weeks, he shall be back too. Open tryouts for my spot next <laughs> yeah, week. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> As always, guys, thank you for joining us on this episode of Lost in Roshar. Remember, the most important chapter a man can read is the next one. We'll see you next week to dive into, I'm going to say it, 31, 32, 33. Let's do three next week. All right. And if you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, be sure to leave us a review on whichever platform you listen on. If you have any theories, span read us at lostinroshar at gmail.com. We'll see you next time on Lost in Roshar. Remember to keep that safe hand covered. <laughs>